1406M. Is that a sub brand it? Well done. Oh, oh. <laughs> You're going to see only stainless steel Rolexes. They're in the middle. So these watches are sort of... A bit like you. A little bit like me. Like a, a, I'm modern. Yeah, He's and I'm middle. a classic. <laughs> so, Explorer 1, Explorer 2, white and black. You've got Daytona, white Zenith. Black. This is uh, 1978. Like. So that's 2003, 2004. Well, I know it's not every day you come up trucks like this, is it? Ah. Well, um, it's been a little bit in the making, shall we say. Um, oh, in the pushing. In the pushing, in the pulling, in the, the, giving, the, in the giving and taking. One of the things that we're going to talk about today is a question that we got asked an awful lot at the watch show in London. Obviously, Jack used to direct everybody down to the... I Old think fella. Called, I think you called it the shit end. The old right? fella. The old fella down. If there's anything old that's um, not your bag, shall we say. So oh, there, might, there might be my bag, but I just... Yeah. The older, so, the older stuff just had yeah. those departments. So I mentioned some time ago to Jack that um, over a probably nearly a 30-year period, I'd been selling watches to a... I'm nearly... I'm being born nearly that long. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, yeah. Your age, yeah, yeah no. definitely. Sorry, it's a 20 year period. <laughs> so, over a 20 year period, I've been selling to a collector, and what you're going to see in front is the fruits of his labour. You're going to see only stainless steel Rolexes. Now, Harry and I have had a conversation today, and they are not new. There's one new because it's the only thing that he liked. They're not, there's a couple of vintage. See the vintage boxes, but the what would be described in the car game as modern classics. So they're not a vintage car, they're not a modern car, but in they're, the middle. they're in the middle. So these watches are sort of a bit like you, a little bit like me. Like uh, I'm um, modern, yeah, He's and I'm a middle. classic. So <laughs> it's really interesting because I'm looking at one of the boxes, and back in the day when um, the retailers used to put stickers on the boxes, they would have a barcode. And one of the watches which I recognise straight away is got the original purchase price on, which is just going to blow you away. I mentioned at the watch show about hulks being in a window. Me going one day looking at three hulks in a window and being asked to buy them with discount, which I obviously did. But unfortunately, I don't have them today. My friend over some period of time has, has talked about selling these and never thought he would. The direction that it's always gone is up, up, up. And I think he's realised, obviously he's getting to retirement age, a little bit older than me. And- um, retired years ago, it's yeah, a hobby. Yeah, and, he, and he's decided to um, sell these watches. We've been very fortunate enough to purchase them. Um, as I've said, there's one modern watch, two which I would class as vintage watches, and then the rest. So can I take the opportunity to go to this one, which obviously sticks out straight away because it has what the dealers used to put on the side of the box, and then they would put a sticker on the back of the case, they would put it on the swing tags. So. I know from the case reference and I know from that 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 is a, a Submariner green bezel which everybody now knows as the Kermit. This watch was purchased new and is unworn, fully stickered. Fully, uh, fully factory stickered. Fully, fully factory stickered. So it's never um, worn this watch? There, there's something, there's 15 watches here. I think out of the 15, there are 11 watches. Fully stickered. Fully stickered. Now, this is something that's going to generate questions. Doesn't matter what you do. And this is why this was his last purchase in 2017, which is a fully stickered Red Right and Sea Dweller, which is the only modern watch that he likes. But he managed to get that from us, from an AD, fully stickered. Yeah. He has been in touch with Rolex 
and he said to them that I have a collection because he's had other watches he's had a collection and how can I further my collection if I can't buy stickered watches and it said don't, don't care who you yeah, are don't, do don't no care more, who you are what you've got what you've done no brand loyalty no buying power um, you can't have a stickered watch this is another reason that he's decided to sell his collection he, he's talk, the brand slightly because he's of talked that. about going down the route of the new editions so in here you've got um, Explorer 1, Explorer 2, white and black. You've got Daytona, white Zenith, black. white and black. The likes of this just happens to be the holy grail of the Kermit world. And it is a fat four. So as I spin it round, it's got a bezel protector on, which I don't think has ever been taken off. And you've got... Oh, well, look, take it off just for the camera, man. Oh, it's like getting a bra off that. <laughs> so, that is the holy grail of watch collecting in Not your modern mark classic. on that. And if when I'm going to spin it round, you've got full stickers, full factory stickers. That's the number that the that's the number on the back as well. Yeah, which is on the box. Which um, all of the all of the paperwork is there. It's even got the anchor, which has got. Um, Receipt in there, anchor, booklets. You can see these. The, this box. I've never seen day like them. Have been, I? When I brought when I brought them in today, the bag that I brought them in it has been chewed by a mouse. So they've obviously been kept somewhere where um, it's <laughs> it's rodent friendly. So, but actual again, original original purchase receipt as well from two thousand and four, I believe. Two thousand and four. Was it a four or three? It's an F serial number, so F 2003, cookie. 2004. Right. Um, unsure. Uh, 2000, it's a f it's 2004. The first, now January the, 2004. Because this watch wasn't a success when this came out, same as the Hulk wasn't a success, my friend bought four of these. I got one and two of our other friends got the others. The others have, have long, long been worn and gone. Um, but this one's been kept. What, what about yours? Did you sell yours at some I point? I sold mine, yeah. You did. Because do, you, do, you, do, you, do you care to tell us how much you sold it for? Uh, the purchase price at the time was £2,650. Yeah. I bet you got that I'm, one, right? I bet you I'm lucky if I got 50 quid over three grand. You couldn't, couldn't give them more. away. Every single person that you said, I've got a green bezeled sub. Don't worry like about it. doesn't. I want a black bezel, but I would have. Can we just show, so, them, show them the difference in the stickers? There's no barcode stickers on yeah. anymore, is there? So, what you get on a modern watch now is on the side of the case at nine o'clock, you get a barcode. That is the thing that the retailers are so, um, so keen to take off. Um, obviously, the factory stickers now run through the clasp, run through the bracelet, which is great because it protects them. But back in the day, um, back in the good old days, shall we say, this is what factory stickers were. You can see by those swing tags, they no, are they clean. Got a mark on them. These are pristine. And this, so, this is the only Submariner of that style, the, what is it, the 16610? Yeah, LV. Where you've, where you've got the maxi dial, the bigger markers. Yeah. But the older style case. That's right. Yeah. So this was You've then, done your homework. This You've was done then, your This homework. was then <laughs> preceded by... This went right up to the last run, which had the rehout on the on the engraving, mm -hmm. and then it went to um, then it went to ceramic. So the ra the rarest versions of these are the ones that are the early ones that have the flat four, and then the late ones that have the yeah. rehaut. So I recently bought a watch. Um, why would it? Why the, the the flat four? Why did they change the four? Well, I don't know. Did, did, did somebody act the powers that be did somebody at rolex decide we'll make so many thousand bezels and we'll put them into these watches and see what happens i don't know i suppose so I got somebody you? you might have me yet yeah. there's no <laughs> the same way that when they change a dial or they put one of these watches has got a rare, rare case reference so it's got a one in the gmt reference makes it rare makes it a, it's it was only produced for a couple of years Again, if I do get things wrong, Jack always likes to pull me up on them. But if anybody, if I do get something wrong, 
feel free to be nice and point it out. Don't be snotty and point it out because I'm, I'm not perfect. So I'm just going to randomly um, go for that box there. Now, hang on, I'll just get you, Jack, because obviously you're really good. So this one is a 1406M. Is that a sub brand there? Well done. Oh, oh, he's there, he's there, and it is a P serial. P serial number. So I know what date the P serial number is, but we'll not we'll not touch that one. So it's a 2001 P serial number. Again, you're gonna open it up. I mean and you're gonna I mean, find... we, we get we buy a lot of watches. Yeah. Not so many older, but when we do, all of this is worn and marked and ripped or missing or not yet. I mean, that looks like it's never been open. It these, looks absolutely brand new. These, again, I'm going to flip it round. Fully stickered, hologram on the back, um, swing tags intact. One of the things that Jack and I have discussed is all of these watches are going to go online tomorrow. They're going to have an individual price. I've always talked to my friend about would somebody come along and just say, I want that collection and I'll pay X number of sums. So you never know, at the end of this, we might just flash up a figure to buy the lot. It or will... let you guess what you think the collections were. That's a good one. Like I say, it's, it's the look of the draw that I've picked this one up. There's, this is a sub non-date. There's identical sub date. See, Dweller, um, it, the, it just goes on. Again, but it is fully, fully stickered. It is quite nice to see that some of the watches have been worn. Now, over the years, he's bought from me, so he may have bought a white dialed Explorer 2, worn, and then he's either worn it himself and replaced it with a brand new one. So he's had multiple versions of these, so there's not just been collecting, there's been a little bit of dealing going on. So Yeah, well, this, he'd, he'd he's, wear one, wouldn't he? And then he would, he would say, wear one. get me a sticker and put it away. Yeah, and that's what he did. So most of these watches he's worn, um, his favourite watch it, out of all of his watch collection was a non-date sub plexiglass. It was a watch that he wore day in, day out. Can um, I ask, Kendo, the anchor, when did that stop coming with the Submariners? Was that... What did they call Hendo? <laughs> <laughs> I just think it, it stopped when the ceramic, uh, right, towards okay, the yeah. end of the ceramic. Right, and, right. Uh, they're an expensive item in the second hand market. Is there anything unique to this anchor that makes it unique to that watch? No, the early ones, I'm almost sure, had um, an anchor reference on. Don't know whether it was unique to the watch, but they, they were in a serial. In a serial yeah, so they, or they were a series related. Right. So if you can imagine, um, the Submariner is, is, pro is probably the best-selling Rolex ever. Stainless steel, sports, bomb-proof. Every, every boy, ev me included, wanted a Submariner. I bet this jewellers isn't there no more, Hendo, you'll know. Blacklock um, jewellers. Blacklock jewellers in Sunderland. Ralph Blacklock, <laughs> uh, absolutely fantastic gentleman. Um, I dealt with him for years and years and years when it was really nice to deal with a Rolex AD. When it could so that, would, that would have been an independent. Independent? Yeah. They, he retired and sold the business to um, Herbert Brown, who are jewellers and pawnbrokers. Are the shops still there today? Shops still there today, closed. Right. The beautiful, beautiful, original. It's going to be my, 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 my pick. I'm going for this one. I don't know what it is. There you go. One one four two seven zero. One one four two seven zero is an explorer one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I got that one right. <laughs> Original Explorer one. So um not a plexiglass version, um, but a modern and wow, lo and behold, it is Unworn, untouched. Unworn, untouched. With a very, very rare bezel protector on. Um, didn't even know you'd get a bezel protector for this that. watch. You know, such a feminine little thing. 
Again, I'm gonna believe, I believe these are all around about the same age, P series 2001. Is that one solid end links or the hollow ones? Uh, solid, end solid end links. End so end. you've got two schools of thumb. The reason they made them solid end links is because the, the end links fractured. The, right. You know, it was two moving part, two working parts. There was never any strength there. Um, this, again, classic wristwatch. What jumps out to me quite a bit is I get asked a lot for birth year watches. So my other half. And they are very hard to find. Very hard to find, especially when you get as old as I am. <laughs> so, but obviously for these um, children that were born in 2001, it's very, very... 21st birthdays aren't well, too far away, yeah. are they? So, shall, we, shall we test them? How much was that watch? In 2001. 16, 1700 quid. It's not bad, you know. Yeah. The watch was £1,950 as a copy of the original receipt, and the customer got £200 discount. £1,750. <laughs> Back in the good old days, so it's brand new stainless steel Rolex, £200 discount. Yeah. Can you imagine? 1950 you, less. Can you imagine going into a Rolex retailer now and ask, well, have you got the audacity to go and ask for a watch? Never mind ask for discount. But it they happened. Make, they make it happened. buy yeah, they make you buy all other stuff. So we had a we had a we had a very, very good customer of ours in a couple of weeks ago. A little bit crazy, but I love him. Um he'll realise exactly who we're talking about. Oh, no, he and he went Bloody hell, I can remember when I got 30% discount on a gold Rolex. <laughs> and and he's right. It, it, we, we've we all had massive discount. Again, on look, look, look at the pristine condition. Brand new. Brand new. Yeah. Your pick. So, I'm going to go only because it's it's what really floats me bold. And we'll open these both up together because I think these watches... Need one. to yeah yeah these these are the two vintage watches um these are the when we say vintage <laughs> no there you go these are the vintage because these are um it's nineteen nine this is nineteen seventy eight and this one is older I'm gonna say early seventies these are Thanks. I can smell the vintage right. from so, here actually. These, it smells like your bedroom. Yeah, these have been, obviously, um, it, when you speak to any Rolex vintage collector, you'll find that, obviously, it doesn't matter where you keep them, they go musky. Well, the cushions, yeah, yeah. So, these are the proper vintage. But again, that bit of paperwork is like brand new. The calendar is like brand new. What's this original? Receipt? All of the all and, of and that. The calendar would have been the same year. Yeah, yeah, nineteen eighty-two. Right? Yeah. So this all there's Rolex service paperwork from two thousand and nine. There are receipts. Hey, look at that. This oyster watch is still dust and perspiration proof, but will not withstand immense and immersion in water. Aye. So that's what the saying is that in two thousand and nine this went back to rolex and i can't think that would have been 2009 that that uh, went no, in that looks that was older but i'm looking at here wow and they are i've never i've never seen these that is the original receipt from Jeddah in saudi arabia now if anybody can work out the hieroglyphics <laughs> we can find out but that unit price is in dirhams, so it'd be 2,150 dirhams. Now that anchor Looks is like the, the original anchor, and that's got a, a reference on, and that is the original purchase receipt in December 1982. Dear sir, we are pleased to inform you that your above repair is now ready for collection. Please bring your repair receipt with you. 1987, it went to Rolex through Ernest Jones. So would they have changed any part on that? No, that watch is totally original. Um, so there's, in 1987, it went to Rolex. 
and that one there is a modern one from 2009. I know that when this watch came, it went straight to Rolex. So in 2009, it went straight to Rolex. Um, there's some workings out on the back there, which is £72.50 plus £7.28 plus £3.50 and 12 pence. I yes. presume 12 pence will be some sort of postage and the the amount is 83.38. I wish I could get a seed well uh, um, so no, I, they wouldn't even accept it for that, for that sort of money. But again, times change and you know you can't obviously always blame Big Brother and the way things go. So plexiglass um, uh, the, the dial is a, um, a great white dial. Okay. That has what does um, that mean? The, it's the the wild the round circles on the dial are larger. Uh, now than normal. They, they would normally, and I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research. I'm gonna be honest because it's a great white, but with that patina, mm -hmm. they don't normally go that color. Now I'm wearing um, a red writing sub, which is very very similar and very the color of the um dials it's a little less intense yellow yeah. isn't it um, More creamy but color. there's no way of it's like a i say a piece of furniture light or dark wood and um, that if you showed jack that's got the rolex sticker on the back from when it was serviced so that watch and if you do the side on view because this is a watch that's been worn for the bracelet and for the bracelet, and for the bracelet if you hang it you know 1982 and look how good the bracelet is so that has been worn until it went into my friend's collection in 2009 and has never seen the light of day since then it's one that he couldn't replace for a sticker on i suppose well, what what he'd said was that some of the watches were that good or are that good that he never felt the need so if he'd worn a, um, a white dialed Explorer, which I know he did for a long time, and then changed it for a fully stickered one, which we're gonna, which we're gonna, we're gonna find. Again, two different things in the, in the vintage game. This is its original box. Now, I know that this watch didn't come from me because it came from an estate sale somewhere near the Hamptons in upstate New York. And he actually flew over, saw the watch advertised, flew over, didn't trust, you know, um, back in the day, you, you, there was no internet, you didn't, you couldn't no, see things was, online, yeah. there was no technology. And he actually went to the estate sale. Now, an estate sale uh, for anybody in the UK is basically when somebody dies, they're a estate. Sale. Yeah, so it's, a, it's a, a bereavement. But in America, what they tend to do is they put the house up for sale, all the contents and sell that yeah. person's estate in in a hole. We'll do the side on view. This is a this is a used wristwatch, a watch from nineteen seventy eight. Um, and, and that even has hollow centre links, right? Hollow centre links. Saint Petersburg, Florida. Yeah, yeah. So that was where it was originally purchased. That was where it was originally purchased. I mean, look at, look, look how crisp that just looks like it was written yesterday. It was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, another. Um, so if you come in and I'm going to hold this watch up against that one and you'll see how the dial is. Yes, it's aged, but it hasn't gone as it hasn't got as much color in. So there's no way there's no. You know, unless you start doing it on purpose by putting tea on the dial or leaving it out put, in the sun, or leaving it out in the sun, there's a. I looked at a very, very um, new watch recently that it had a colour tinge, and the guy said, "How can I make it go more?" And I said, "Well, what have you done?" So I says, "Do you work in an environment where there's ultraviolet lights? Where you do this? Where you? Th there's no. There's not a pattern. So." you know watches age watches patina this one jack's got there it's got original links and it's got the original um extension 
in there. You know, it's not very often that you come across, again, this box is very, very rare. Um, it's not very often you come across watches of this ilk in this sort of condition that tomorrow will go in a plastic bag because there's nothing else to keep it in. Um, but that'll be kept the way that, it, that it's been kept. So, you know, pristine. My choice. So your choice. Um, I'm conscious because we're obviously, you know, people. Some, some people say they really enjoy the episode. Some people say that I prattle on a little bit too much. So we'll try and speed it up a little bit. So we've got two Daytonas here, which I think if we unbox them together and we can do the comparison, we can let people see once again, like all of the watches, they have got everything. So that is a 16520. 16520. Yeah. Um, B-serial, mate. Yeah. So this one here is a an original Zenith Daytona. Um, so pre-Rolex movement. So U serial number would be 1998-1999. So this is going to be... 1998. I'm Ernest Jones. Um, I remember. UK. The, I remember going and buying the day that I bought this watch. No. Um, and I think. You want to get? You'll get in the sack today. I know no name on it, mate. Well, there is a. These were bought from a. We didn't call them flippers in them days. This was somebody who had both black and white. And do you want to read the price out? Because <laughs> I know what the price is. So this is a Zenith Daytona with the whitest of white dial it's got its full sticker on the back this watch has been worn i know it's been worn lightly by the look of this very very lightly worn but the sticker is intact tell you um, what's quite funny it's same today the white face was more than the black face so it yes. goes back yes it's been a trend for a long time been a time. trend like the, the blacks have always worth less than the white yes. The white face was 3,750 quid and the black face was 3,550. I'll tell you what, I'll take both. He, and he, I'll tell you, how we, tell you how we paid. Building society check. Who takes checks nowadays? My friend got the white, I got the black. So that's how we, we did the deal. I mean, um, who would know? Again. I, again, I had my watch for probably less than a year because at that time it was all of me money in the pot if we if we show them side We're by side show as them well side you'll by be able side. to see the difference between so can you get what's the difference between the zenith and the exactly the same case exactly the same bezel the movement's different but the dial is also different so your really sub second dial is at on the on the zenith it's on, on the zenith is the nine o'clock and on the rolex movement it's there one of the things that I always bleat on about is the Zenith movement was designed to have a date aperture and the Zenith El Primero has a date on and these don't still today. Did the Zenith El Primero was it around at the same time as that? Yeah, that's the movement that is actually the same Zenith right. El Primero movement right. is the movement. Obviously, you like your modern watches, but. Ah, what, I, I what do would really you prefer? like this. Would you prefer the, the white or the black dial? I like the white. It's always the white. I'm, Crisp. I'm, I'm, I'm the same. White dial. Crisp, isn't it? The only watches, and I've got a, a watch which is a very little known Rolex watch. It was never very successful. It's this watch here. Um, and I want, to, I want to show you that. You can only buy Daytona in white, Explorer in white. Unless you go day just. Back in the day, was it white labelled? Was it like, were people aware that it was a Zenith movement? No. Or was it just no, sold as? It was, no, it, it was, was always, it was always sold as a Zenith movement. It was always powered by a Zenith movement. But it was only if you knew you knew. It was, yeah, yeah, it was only if you knew. Right. You would have knew. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, I would have knew. Yeah. Back in the day, yeah, of course. So, this is the watch here that... Well, um, you don't then. You are the ugly duckling. The ugly duckling. Maybe not the ugly duckling, but maybe just a little known watch. A watch that was made in the 60s and 70s, as per a lot of watch companies. I think the reason why this is so nice is because 
It's brand new. Pristine, isn't it? It's, it's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Sweet, look at the swing tag. You know, <laughs> as Jack said earlier on, normally these are all grubby and groggy and that's got the original purchase receipt in. These have been kept. Um, the sticker on the back's a little bit smudged, but that's just, people say, oh, well, has that been worn? No, it's just smudged over time. Ooh, I think Come that's on, then. probably 2004. Well, bearing in mind in 2004 how much a Kermit was, I think these were retailing in 1970. They, were, they, were, they went to 2170, but they were round about that price. Well, 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 well. He's got it miles wrong. Right. What? This watch was £2,950. What? However, is that because? However, 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 he got a monkey discount. He got five hundred pound yeah. discount. I've got a guess. Is the bezel white gold? Bezel's white gold. So yeah. that might be what, because the Explorer was around. Yeah. The original price he yeah, said yeah. there. So that um, and that steel bezel. Yeah, I'll take it on the chin. I got it wrong. Yeah, See this, yeah. So with the one four hundred and twenty pound for extra five year won't he? Yeah. <laughs> Get it for no, free. No, that's um, that's. Sterling Care, that's £420 for five years insurance. All so right. a £3,000 item would cost you, five hundred would cost you £90 a year to £85 quid a so year. So they must have given insurance at the time with the watch. Well, you, you had the option. It was a, it was a, it was a sales, it was a point of sale thing. Would you like to take the insurance out? It was quite mad now because a lot of people ask us when they buy the watch, who's the best person to get insured from? You would still think... You still think ADs would, would recommend a company? Yeah, again? well, obviously what you'd like to think is that the ADs would have, you know, if you were a big enough company, you would have an insurance, you would have an affiliated insurance broker. You know, if anybody ever asks me um, who would I recommend, I recommend, yeah, I recommend a good broker. We recommend TH Marsh. TH Marsh. It's, they are the, they know their onions, they know what they're talking about. Prim so sure. Yeah. Prim sure. Yep. Good as well. So there you go. Um, I know because it's got, I can see it on the box, that these two are the GMTs. That one there is a slightly older GMT. So it's a GMT Master, which is identical watch, but functionality is a little bit different. So this one will be a mid 90s and this one will be an early 2000 so x serial my one uh so x serial number yet yeah, mid 90s 1994 handle 94 mid 90s you've got so we'll do a little comparison obviously everybody knows the bezel as a pepsi it's still by far the best selling uh bezel insert this one black and red is nicknamed the coke but one of the things that you're going to see straight away, this is the beauty of this one. It's another fully stickered, fully stickered. brand new. But if you turn yours round, Jack, and show the bracelet, this is the modern flip lock bracelet, the same as a um, Submariner. So some people might say, oh, well, it hasn't got the right bracelet on. When that watch was new, up until it became a GMT Master II, it had a non flip lock. A lot of people love that bracelet. Some people say it's an old and not as good. I've always liked the all black bezel in the GMT. Mm -hmm. And when I was uh, getting some B-roll shots before, I noticed that you can't move the hour hand independently on the yeah. Pepsi one. On the Pepsi, the, on that's the Pepsi master. one, that's a master. So yeah. you would have to advance your date in in, in, in order. Yeah. Whereas this one, you can, you can move do. your hand, your yeah. GMT hand, sorry, your, your hour mm, hand, yeah will advance the date. Yeah. It's just a modified movement. This is more of a standard run. This has got a rare case reference for the anoraks out there. Um, all of these watches are going online tomorrow. These are in by no way going to be the cheapest watches. I don't know whether I'll ever get these again in my lifetime. And I have got a few years left in me, Jack. But I don't, know whether, I don't know whether we'll get fully stickered brand new these watches want to be bought and put into collections they either want to be birth year so this is a this is a k serial number so that's 2003 2004 for anybody that was born that year or anybody's got any children 
if anybody wants to um, put a value on the whole collection, send it in on your YouTube and we have done it today. We, yeah. we have done a, a, a retail value. So Jack and I both know the retail value today. Um, if you want to pop it on, do that. I'll quickly go to the modern box before, don't know what these ones are, but this is the only modern Rolex that he bought. It's a re-edition, Red Writing Sea Dweller. So that'll, that'll be the first edition. It's the very first edition. It was bought off a guy called, hey, funny fella, funny fella. Good luck with that, not Good luck. Hey, <laughs> so yeah, this was, this was, this was bought Actually, you can tell it came off you because the inner box is really grubby. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> these watches are 30 year old, this one's only. So, this was, we'll keep this one covered up just because it has got uh, barcodes on. It's a 2017 watch, and I'd hate to think anybody got shirty and said, obviously, it's a, it's a, a recent watch. This is brand new, unworn, fully Full stickered. So, to me, this wants to go into a collection. Um, so it'll be like these one day. Yeah. Like he that. bought this to wear because oh, right, he'd okay. said, oh, well, I might as well. And then he then he fluttered about buying a James Cameron. And then he thought, well, if I buy a James Cameron, what else do I buy? Hates the Yacht Master because it's too modern. And then he thought, well, where do I stop? So this was the watch that he wanted to wear but didn't. So you can see how somebody's somebody's lifelong collection this has been is that been, where it stopped this is where it stopped that's the last one that he bought. i've just sold him a panerai so which for the youtubers out there you've asked me loads of times harry you've mentioned it about doing a thing on panerai we'll do a thing again, on panerai this, next like so this, this is fully fully, fully stickered sticker. and again to me it just wants um putting away part of a collection you know that what's not to say that there's somebody out there that this could be the first watch in a in a 15 20 strong rolex collection it's, um, great, it's great to see and collections like this. what you've got to appreciate is he still made money on this yeah he bought it in 2017 and he still made money so two more boxes at non-date sub and Mine's a date sub, then. Oh, that's a date sub. So. Oh, guess what? She's fully stickered. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guess what? She's, She's fully, fully stickered. stickered. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got two. The epitome of Rolex. We've done the Kermit. We've, we've done, done the, the Daytonas. We've done the Daytonas. But there is a. Ah, uh, hang on a moment. You've got a sea dweller. So right? I've got a sea dweller. So one of these. Oh, come on, and one of these must be. A Submariner date. I've got the date. Jack's got You've the got the date. We've already done the Submariner non date. Yes. So, right. Yeah. But again, Jack's pointed out look, hologram on the back, bezel protectors, and everything. Everything brand new. Tags have never been off. Paperwork's never been out. K serial number. So um, a lot of Hangers these, again. A, long, a lot of these watches were round about the early two thousand, and then the mid two thousand. Mine, mine from Sunderland again. Blacklocks, two thousand and one. I even remember what I was wearing that day when I. I bet it was body. <laughs> <laughs> Big lapels. No, it wasn't. It's not that long ago. <laughs> we had a little look today, just out of curiosity. We we bought the parcel. It's our parcel. We had a look on Chrono today at try and compare prices and about three of the stickered watches you could compare there was one or two for sale. But there's none. There's none. We went of these on to a we went sticker. on to an advert, an Italian advert, which said that the watch was fully stickered. The watch <laughs> let me run was, over. was looked like it had been run over, like Jack says, and it had been stickered up. So it, it, it was made to look like it was these new. Are we, genuine. These are full factory stickers, brand new. Um, like I say, it's just... I don't think... Incredible. I don't think we'll see a collection like this. Well, we might, but it's very, very rare, this. Very, very rare. And 
the last two I'll do that, the last two watches one in black one in white which is the explorer 2 now i know one of these have been worn because he has always said it was one of his favorite watches it's the white dial this uh, one's got stickers but not case stickers all ah, right so that's the unworn one so i think the white one's very very lightly so but once again uh, purchase receipts are in there, links, um, everything. You know, it's coming from Jobs and Jewelers. Yeah, another company Can't that allow. we've dealt with. Used to be AD, didn't he? Yeah, used lovely to be, fella. Yeah, used to be Rolex. 2001. So, again, we've got in the collection, we've got Explorer 1, Black Dial, the only one made. Explorer 2, Black and White, Daytona Black and White. Um, sub non-date sub date obviously if you wanted to be critical um a black bezeled gmt yeah but i've got that black bezeled <laughs> was was there a, a milgauss around at that time or no uh, no was no that, that was a later edition milgauss was um 2008 mm -hmm. so it, it it lost He'd lost a little bit of shine for them and didn't purchase. That was on the cusp of what do you get? Um, and at the end of the day, when I say about him, he fancied a James Cameron, but in the flesh, no good. He does not, did not like the Yacht Master. Not a lot of people do. I think the Yacht Master is a great watch in all gold with a blue bezel. Mm -hmm. But the steel. Well, a younger person's watch. And it is a younger person's watch. Um, so, I don't know. How much would that collection have cost at all years ago? When he initially wanted to sell this collection, it was only half, and I offered him £30,000. The last offer I made him before he purchased the... Red writing. The red writing. Um, I offered him £90,000. Um, we've paid considerably more than that, but it is... The ultimate it's Rolex a collection. collection, isn't it? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say he's probably got well, around about uh, sixty thousand pounds. If he bought a house when he bought his first watch, what would be worth the most? Um, well, it all depends where he bought the house. Of course, but bought a normal house. house I bought a house in Chelsea Street. My first house in Chelsea Street. I paid thirteen thousand pounds for it. It's worth a hundred grand a day. Um, so in relative terms, watches that was, are worth more. The watches are worth more. There you go. So that's what we're getting to. Josh asked, asked the exact same question, and I'd said there's probably, I nearly gave it away there. I know how <laughs> much there is worth, but there, there isn't, he wouldn't have paid anywhere near like 100 grand. Um, so, for investment terms, it's the been a very, very good investment. And going forward, I mean, they just aren't making any more five I've digit got, sports. It's a, it's Put a, it this way that are the, on it. there is um, a fat four Kermit fully sticker just sold for £45,000. You, you don't see them. I've been watching it. There isn't another, there's some new old stock, but not fully stickered at around about the £40,000 mark for a watch that was £2,650. And you probably got discount. Yeah. All right then. Let's yeah. wrap it up there. Yeah. Thank you very much for for showing everyone that. I think the YouTube audience will enjoy it. Great. Any questions? Feel free to put them on the end. Feel free to ask Kendall. <laughs> Anytime you want. I think we'll enjoy that. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thanks very much. Bye.